Hey, what's up, y'all? About to give y'all another Bible study. This is Mark chapter 8. This is Jesus feeds 4,000. Or Jesus miraculously feeds 4,000 uh, by the power and grace and the love of our God, our Father. Here it is. About this time, another great crowd gathered. And the people ran out of food again. Jesus called his disciples and told them, I feel sorry for these people. They have been here with me for three days, and they have nothing left to eat. And if I send them home without feeding them, they will faint along the road. For some of them have come a long distance. So Jesus is a pretty cool guy, right? Pretty caring, you know. Somebody you want to be your, your friend, compadre. How are we supposed to find enough food for them here in the wilderness? His disciples asked. How many loaves of bread do you have? He asked. Seven, they replied. So Jesus told all the people to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves, thanked God for them, broke them into pieces, and gave them to his disciples, who distributed the bread to the crowd. A few small fish were found, too. So Jesus also blessed these and told his disciples to pass them out. They ate until they were full, and when the scraps were picked up, there were seven large baskets of food left over. There were about 4,000 people in the crowd that day, and he sent them home after they had eaten. Immediately after this, he got on into a boat with his disciples and crossed over to a region, Dalamothalia. Pharisees demand a miraculous sign. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had arrived, they came to argue with him. Testing him to see if he was from God, they demanded, Give us a miraculous sign from heaven to prove yourself. When he heard this, he sighed deeply and said, Why do you people demand a miraculous sign? I assure you, I will give no, no such gen this generation. I will not give this generation any such sign. So he got back into the boat and left them, and he crossed onto the other side of the lake. What is it? Okay. See you later. So he got back on. So he said, he, you know, to people with no faith, Jesus is not going to give any kind of miraculous sign. Now to the people with faith who come to, from long distances to come see him and believe in him and believe he's the son of God and you know uh, and that they will be connected to the Father and have a relationship with God our Father and go to heaven those people will receive the miraculous sign. But these people like the Pharisees, those people who are hypocrites and skeptical of Jesus and his powers they, uh, the power that he receives from the Holy Spirit they will not receive these kind of miraculous signs from Jesus. Jesus said, Why do you people keep demanding a miraculous sign? I assure you, I am not giving this generation any such sign. But he just, you see, you see what I'm saying? So he's saying he's not going to give this generation any sign, but he just gave this generation signs. You understand? So it's just like a lot of different things he said that are above our head. Not that they don't make sense, but they're above our human comprehension. How he speaks, how Jesus speaks sometimes. Uh, so he got back on the boat and left him and crossed to the other side of the lake. The yeast of the Pharisees and Herod. But the disciples dis discovered they had forgotten to bring any food so there was only one loaf of bread with them in the boat. 
as they were crossing the lake, Jesus warned them, Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod. They decided he was saying this because they hadn't brought enough bread. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he said, Why are you so worried about having no food? Won't you ever learn or understand? Are, the heart, are your hearts too hard to take it in? You have eyes, can't you see? You have ears, can't you hear? Don't you remember anything at all? What about the 5,000 men I fed and the 5,000 and then the five loaves from the five loaves of bread? 12. How many disciples, oh, how many baskets of leftovers did you pick up afterward? 12, they said. And when I fed the 4,000 with seven loaves, how many large baskets of leftovers did you pick up? Seven, they said. Don't you understand even yet? He asked them. So he like, dude, you just seen me make food and bread and feed 5,000 men and have 12 baskets left over of leftovers of the food. Then you saw me feed 5,000 and, I'm sorry, 4,000 and have seven left, seven loaves left over, left over, all kinds of baskets left over of food. So why are you so concerned with the food and the bread? Why don't you elevate your consciousness and your thoughts to things beyond the money and the bread and what you're going to eat and think of heavenly things and store up heavenly riches that will last for eternity forever they will never rot they will never rust no rats no anything can ever come and take this away from you that's those heavenly riches that you get when you serve jesus as your lord and savior you'll never lose so that's what jesus is saying on us got to read deeper into what he's saying. Jesus heals a blind man. When they arrived to Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to Jesus, and they begged him to touch and heal the man. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out the village. Then, spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on, the, on him and asked, can you see anything now? The man looked around. Yes, he said. I see people, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Now, uh, maybe this guy had vision prior to going blind, and that's why he knows what trees look like. Or maybe he has dreams. Know, maybe I don't know, but he somehow has a picture of what he feels dreams look like. I mean, what trees look like, even though he's a blind man. Then Jesus placed his hands over the man's eyes again. As the man stared intently, his sight was completely restored. There's that word restored again, but coming across that word a lot and he could see everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't go back into the village on your way home. So that man had to follow his instructions. So whatever Jesus told him, um, people would say that was weird, you know what I'm saying? For Jesus to sit there, spit in his hand, <laughs> and put it on the man's eyes. Imagine how much faith you have to have in Jesus as this man to say for Jesus to say, ha ha, phew, spit on his hands and put them on the man's eyes. 
for that man, uh, that blind man, to allow to have so much faith in Jesus to allow him to do that. You know, says a lot about the blind man and why he was healed. You know, through the power of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Peter's declaration about Jesus. Jesus and his disciples left Galilee and went up to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. As they were walking along, he asked them, Who do people say I am? Well, they replied, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say you are one of the other prophets. Then Jesus asked, who do you say I am? Because it really don't matter what other people say about Jesus. It's about what you personally think and say about Jesus. And you know. Peter replied, you are the Messiah. But Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. So Peter always stepped up. You know, one way or the other, but he, he steps up and he, you know, tells the truth through the Holy Spirit, uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Jesus predicts his death. Then Jesus began, began to tell them that he, the Son of Man, would suffer many terrible things and be rejected by the leaders and the leading priests and the teachers of the religious law. He would be killed and three days later, he would rise again. As he talked about this openly with his disciples, Peter took him aside and told him he shouldn't say things like this. See, so just like, man, Peter, Peter all over the place, man. He's human. He makes mistakes. You know, he, he go hard for Jesus, but at the same time, you trying to tell the Lord, Almighty, that's that's how much of a fr on a friend level they are too. You gotta understand that. Like that, you feel like, hey, come on, see, let me holler at you. You ain't gotta, you don't want to be saying stuff like that. I don't want to see you go, man. Come on now, don't do that. Stop my man. But uh, he's not right in what he's saying. You know, this is the Lord of Almighty. You know, uh, the author of human history of the universe of the universe. Uh, and Peter has no right, no say so, in what God the Father has planned for his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, in his ultimate plan for humanity and the salvation of humanity, not just the plan, but the, 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 the redemption of his entire creation of people like, of creatures, creatures like himself. Uh, Jesus turned and looked at his disciples and then said to Peter very sternly, Get away from me, Satan. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not God's. Then he called his disciples and the crowds to come over and listen. If any of you wants to be my follower, he told them, you must put aside your selfish ambition, shoulder your cross, and follow me. If you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. If you give up your life for me, for my sake, and for the sake of the good news, you will find true life. And how do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul in the process? Deep, deep. What's the benefit of getting all this short term glory from the outside world, the world, not God? What is it when you're going to lose your soul for eternity and be burning in hell for eternity? Is anything worth more than your soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? No. The answer is no. If a person is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, I, the Son of Man, will be ashamed of that person when I return 
in the glory of my Father with the holy angels. So, how you treat Jesus on earth is how he going to treat you when he comes back in his full glory to save us all. Dead and alive shall rise. And be with our Lord for eternity, forever. So, I'll let you bear in the new Jerusalem, new heaven and earth, all of that good stuff, you know. And we will avoid the lake of fire, the second death, all that bad stuff that's reserved for Satan, all of his demons, and all of the people who do not, uh, who reject Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So, and as the Son of God, only begotten Son, and that He died for our sins, rose back to life on the third day. So, and that He rose back to heaven, ascended into heaven, and that He's waiting to come back to save all of us at the appointed time that God the Father has appointed. And no man knows the day or the hour that that will happen, but it will happen. Just as all of the scriptures have came true at their appointed time and they don't make sense until they come true this is the same exact thing as far as the return of the Lord the day the great day of the Lord and all of those good things so believe in him while there's still time while you still have time no one is promised tomorrow so love y'all man holler to peace